Hey, Fred, I yeah, think you've noticed, but we've collected a lot of uh, nice Pirates memorabilia yeah. along here over the years, and uh, we do need some more money, so I think we should sell some of these items to yeah, get know. some. I don't know if I should uh, give away this away, but... You have something else? I have something that would be Ooh. worth big bucks. Now, this is that? some of the official water. When Greg Brown was here as part of the... Uh, Bucko Banner Special Edition. Right. He drank from this bottle. Wow. He drank from this bottle. Wow. Look Ooh. at that. Look at the uh, I, I very got, little. He maybe drank about one, maybe two ounces. That might be probably two, a little maybe bit. Maybe two sips. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we should. You know, we can't. Maybe we should get a, like a DNA testing on it. Yes. To to uh, make sure we have to like a let our. You shouldn't even touch it anymore. Don't even touch it. Anymore. Well, no, you can touch it, but uh, I'm, I'm sure there's some DNA on the inside of it here. Or on the outside somewhere on the, the the top of it there. It's like a letter of authenticity. Boy, right. Because people aren't going to believe. <laughs> that it's just no, uh, do, normal that he water, drank water. From, yeah, yeah, that he drank from it. The, unless we have a, you the, know, a DNA test. I don't right. know how much that would cost. Maybe that it would, I don't know. We'd have to see how much that would cost first of all. But when people find out that this oh, is Greg Brown's water. The official oof. water of Bucko Band. Millions. Powerball lottery? That's nothing uh, compared to what we're getting out of here. It'd be close. It would be close. I'm telling you right now. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Live from Studio 3, and then heavily edited for content, it's Bucko Banter. Introducing your hosts, originally from somewhere near Newcastle and now being a good husband and father when he's not running off by himself to PNC Park, it's Fred Rossano, a Pittsburgh Pirates fan since before he was born and still residing in his parents' basement when he's not sleeping in the Pirates clubhouse, it's Matthew Peasley. Finally, he may look like a piece of plastic on a stick, but he has a life of his own and he's the real expert on bucko banter. It's Pirate Panda. Hey, and welcome again to Bucko Banner. I am Fred Rosano, along with Matthew Peasley. And Matt, a lot to talk about, beginning with uh, Pirate Fest and a couple other things with <laughs> going on up to college here. Right. We've, even though it's winter, it's been kind of busy for the Pirates uh, in the region here. We had Pirate Fest that you and me were lucky enough to attend uh, with Jonathan Rosano, I believe is his name. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. He he helped us out uh, to get some reports back there. We we had the opportunity to hear from Andrew McCutcheon and Francisco Cervelli and some other players personally, and we have some video from our talks with them. But um, it, that was just kind of a nice warm up from baseball because that was right on the heels of the news of the Neil Walker trade and some other players coming and going like Pedro Alvarez and uh, a lot of the players confirmed that they were still confident from the 98 wins last year and they're confident um, that they can carry on that uh, this year and it's not like the parts haven't replaced anybody we lose neil and pedro uh there but uh they've added a lot of new pieces like john jaso at first base jake gobert at first base jason rogers at first base so there's they have options and they've been loading up on pitchers too it seems especially in the bullpen not so much uh the only part that I see is lacking is the ho coming where the home run is going to come from. No. That's what was it, 27 from Pedro and 16 from Neil, and they really haven't replaced him. Uh, but you, you're right. Yeah, they they seem to be a lot of uh, emphasis on the uh, on the bullpen and whether uh, you know they're they're looking for uh, uh, since they re-signed Melanson mm -hmm. and have Watson. Looking for uh, the ones b below that uh, you come in in the seventh, sixth, seventh inning. But they've uh, – a couple of those guys, Juan Nicasio, I believe, yeah. they're mm -hmm. saying they're going to stretch him out as a, as a starter and uh, who's, you know, seeing that as a possibility. Uh, and also I was reading the other day about uh, Jeff Locke. They're uh, tinkering with his uh, delivery a little bit. Tinkering. Yeah. Tinkering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he, he's got uh, making $3 million now, so they can definitely see him as a part of the rotation, even mm -hmm. though a lot of fans last year were not too happy with some of his inconsistency. But um, yeah, if they are trying to make him more consistent as a starter, he, he, he's going to be a he's big part of the rotation. He's still only 28, so you never, you never know where – again, he could pitch like 
a Charlie Morton. So many games in a row, almost unhittable. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he just loses it. And I guess you know, that's a that's a difference between it. You know, a lot of the, the star pitchers and the guys that are just going to be average for the rest of their lives. They just can't be consistent. Yep. But the uh, just recently they uh, had have re-signed uh, all seven of their arbitration yeah. eligible players. That was uh, Francisco Cervelli, Jared Hughes, Jeff Locke, like we talked about, Jordy Mercer, Mark Melanson, and Tony Watson. And uh, signed Chris Stewart. To a pretty long extension there too. Yeah, back, that was kind of surprising there. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, he's not going anywhere for a while. Two I mean, years, I think, plus a plus an option year, which I, I, surprised me. He's been a solid backup mm-hmm. for him. Um, he he came through with a lot of clutch hits there. On, he, he seemed like he usually was playing on Sundays or during day games, but he always seemed to find a way to get on base. But I read this and kind of found it kind of shocking. He has he doesn't have a home run with the Pirates. That can't be. Maybe it was last year. Maybe it, was, it might have been, been just, just last, last season, year. but still, that's something. I thought know, he had a couple years before. Maybe, but. But it, he's hit better. His average has right. been the best it's ever been the but last two years. Talking about the power stroke, you're not going to find that from Chris Stewart. No. Um, but w- if Stewart's going to be here for two, three more years. Uh, what is the next question then? Is, is Cervelli gone? Uh, do they bring Diaz up uh, earlier? Um, well, I think part of that got answered by them getting rid of. Uh, their, their Cutting ties with Tony, Tony Sanchez. Sanchez. Yeah. Not too surprising there, but still when you invest so much into him. But as a first-round draft pick there, I believe it was uh, 2008 or 2009, he was the first-round first, first round pick by the Pirates. Um, just never lived up to those expectations. No, he, he started out being uh, – I think he went to Boston. College, Boston, yeah. Uh, starting out to be a great defensive player, and they were kind of worried about his offensive – Abilities. Then he came up and, um, well, as he was going through the minor leagues, he was more a better hitter than he was a defensive player. Yeah. And then he, I thought he did well, uh, you know, in his time when he was up in the majors. There, he seemed to hit pretty well. I don't, you know, I, I, I guess pitch framing is you know so important. Mm-hmm. I guess he had a heck of a time even in AAA and throwing out runners and yeah. stuff. He just wasn't real good, but. But anyway, getting back to Diaz, that that's sort of he's obviously going to be starting at least at AAA, and you know they're mm-hmm. grooming him for a, a major league spot, maybe you know sometime during the year, or you know I don't know why you would have a third catcher. But. Yeah, and they're high on Reese McGuire too in the lower levels. They, he was a early round draft pick a couple yeah, years ago still, too, and he seems to be on the right path. I mean, he might not stiff the major leagues for another three or four or five years, but uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to trade him. They want to see what he can do uh, down the road, that catcher. Um, so beyond that, it, a lot of players coming, going, signing. Uh, we had our big event uh, up at Franciscan University mm-hmm. uh, last week um, with Greg Brown, Steve Blass, our buddies who had a good – we had a good time here with them. Our buddies. Yeah, yeah they, they definitely uh, – you, you know what's kind of good about that, I think, when they came here? We sort of put them at ease. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, them being on, uh, you know, not ever being on a podcast, maybe. Mm-hmm. We kind of made them relax. And we took the pressure off of yeah. them, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, they, they looked to That's us, what we do. They looked to us for to get to get through it, and we all four worked well as a team together. I'm, yes, I'm very, did. very proud of that. Uh, so they were there. John Wayner was there. Bob Walk was there. Neil Walker was there. Uh, they had a nice roundtable discussion in front of – more than 500 people at Finnegan Good. Fieldhouse. Good. And uh, so it was a, definitely a great night. Uh, they provided a lot of laughs, talked about a lot of memories of good pirate baseball in the past three years. And then Bob Walk talked about his time in the 90s, and Steve Blass talked about his time winning a World Series in the 70s. And um, great food there, too. It was an uh, all-around Good. great event. Good. And uh, got to talk to some of those guys one-on-one, too. But uh, everybody in the community that came out to support the uh, Franciscan Athletics uh, definitely were rewarded with a good time uh, mm-hmm. put on by the Pirates and uh, good deal. everybody at Franciscan. You should be supportive of us. It's not, I am supportive. It's not take it. It's, not it's sa- because of us you're able to have a job. <laughs> do you understand that? Yes. yes, I do understand that, and I'm very thankful. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, the Greg Brown water. We can use that as our opening. Yeah, yeah.
Did you label it? No. Go get it. No, I'm not. Me I'm not messing up the set. Is it right there? Yes. I can reach right there. You said you were going to label. You t promised me you were going to label it. 